Hello, Brett Etheridge here, founder of Dominate the GRE, and in this video I want to talk to you about the importance of using logic and common sense on the GRE, especially on questions that you may not immediately know how to do, you know, the traditional way. For example, take a look at the question on your screen. So this may be a challenging question for you. Even if you know how to do this question straight away, still pay attention to what I'm going to share because I think it'll help you on other questions that may not be immediately obvious to you. But I think for a lot of you, this is going to be a, a fairly challenging question, especially if it's been a while since you've looked at probability. Go ahead and press pause, give it a try on your own, and we'll come back and talk about it together. All right, so how'd you do? Well, let's assume you did not know immediately how to do it the traditional way, right? I mean, this is an application of the complement rule of probability, something you certainly should know how to do on the GRE, namely that the probability of something, like the probability of x, equals 1 minus the probability of not x, right? So if I have uh, time, I'll come back and kind of talk through the actual math. But let's talk about logic and common sense. Let's assume, for example, that you don't immediately know how to solve this problem. Which answer choices make absolutely no sense? Because that's what you want to do on the GRE. Remember, one of the things that I always tell my students is to remember that the GRE is a means to an end. Your goal is to get right answers. And everything I try to do here on these videos, certainly what I do in my course when I'm tutoring students as well, is help them understand that doing things the traditional way isn't always the best way on the GRE. And the other thing is, what happens if you feel stuck? What happens if you look at a question and you simply don't know or don't remember how to do it on test day? Well, your goal still needs to be to get a right answer to figure out another way of coming at the problem, to use logic and common sense sometimes to eliminate clearly wrong answer choices to, at the very worst, improve your guessing odds and potentially even arrive at the right answer. So let's talk through that, right? Let's first look at the most obvious wrong answer, the eye-catcher wrong answer. On the GRE, there's almost always an answer choice that's kind of the, the answer choice that average John Doe test taker might, you know, might pick if he or she doesn't know how to do the problem. And here, that answer choice would be A, one-fourth, right? Why would that be the obvious wrong answer choice? Well, because they're asking, what's the probability of getting at least one heads, right? So one, so one heads out of what? Four flips of a coin. We're going to flip it four times. So maybe you think, ah, oh, well, I'm getting one out of four flips, one-fourth. I catch a wrong answer, right? So let's eliminate that straight away. Now let's apply some logic and common sense. Which other answer choice or answer choices don't make any sense? One-half doesn't make any sense. Why? Because the probability is one-half that you will get a heads on one flip of a coin. In other words, let's draw this out on your scratch paper. We're going to flip the coin once, then we're going to flip the coin twice, then we're going to flip it a third time, and then we are going to flip it a fourth time. And we only need to get heads one time out of those four flips. But on the very first flip, your probability is going to be one half. So one half would be the answer if you literally were just flipping a coin once, that is your probability of getting a heads, one out of two. The problem even tells you that. But then it adds that we're going to flip it four times. They're going to give you four chances, so now all of a sudden you're going beyond the realm of just a one-half probability. It's either going to get more likely or less likely, and that, I'm going to come to that in a second. But clearly answer choice B is out of the question. So right here, at worst, you've improved your guessing odds to one out of three. You have three possible answer choices left. And that's huge on test day, right? Because what I think a lot of students do, and this might have been your experience, you look at this question and you start to panic. Or you start to think to yourself, oh my gosh, I just don't know how to do this. Or I think I'm okay at probability, but I don't know how to do at least one types of questions. Like that's a harder variation of probability, and that's true. But you don't want to immediately clam up. You don't want to give up. You don't want to start to freak out. You want to start taking action. And one action you can take 
again, is to use some logic, some common sense. Let's eliminate the eye catcher wrong answer. Let's eliminate the, uh, the obvious wrong answer if you just even think a little bit logically and now you've improved your guessing odds, right? Because the other thing to understand is, do you think it's gonna be pretty likely or not likely that you're gonna get at least one heads? Well, I already talked about the fact that you have a one in two chance of getting a heads. If I only give you one flip, that's already 50-50. What if I give you a second flip? Wouldn't you assume your odds would go up? Now you have two chances to get a heads. Well, I already have a 50-50 chance. If you give me two tries, man, I'm certainly, I've got a very good chance of getting it. Well, what if I still don't get it? I'm going to give you a third chance. So now my probability goes up even more. And then I'm going to give you a fourth chance. The bottom line is it's pretty likely that you are going to get a heads if I give you four chances. And you only have to get one, at least one, right? So for that reason alone, if you were going to guess, I'd venture because you're getting four chances, I'd venture towards the higher probability, right? Seven eighths or 15 sixteenths. I'd probably, if I were guessing, eliminate answer choice C as well. And then again, now you're down to a 50-50 guess if you didn't know how to do the math. Or maybe you remember something about probability, namely that when you have multiple iterations, in this case, four tosses of a coin, you multiply the probabilities, right? So one half chance on your first flip, another one half chance on your second flip, another one half chance on your third flip, another one half chance, one out of two chance on your fourth flip. And we know in probability with multiple iterations, you multiply things. So one half times one half times one half is going to be one, two, four, eight, sixteen, right? One sixteenth. So maybe you look at that and say, ah, 16 in the denominator, somehow I'll go with answer choice E, hmm, if you were guessing, right? And then you need to remember, wait, why isn't answer 1 16th? Well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, of course it doesn't make any sense. We already eliminated the, the you know, not likely outcomes because we've already realized logically it has to be pretty likely. So obviously 1 16th doesn't make sense. Ah, that's because we need to use the complement rule, right? The probability of getting at least one heads is one minus the probability of not at least one heads, which means that would be the same thing as the probability of getting tails four times in a row, which incidentally is the exact same probability, right? Tails, one half, tails, one half, tails, one half, tails, one half. In other words, if you got tails all four times, that probability is very small very small chance you're going to get tails four times in a row, 1 16th. So that at least one heads would be 1 minus that. Well, 1 minus 1 16th, of course, equals 1 minus uh, 1 minus 1 16th equals 15 16ths. So my purpose here, again, wasn't to teach you how to do the math, although I just went ahead and did that. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, you can post comments below, ask your questions in the comment area below this video. But again, all of that to say you can still come very close to getting the right answer straight away or at least improving your guessing odds by using a little bit of logic and common sense. So remember, if you see a question on test day that's a little bit challenging, don't give up, don't panic. Do your best to improve your guessing odds. Think through it, think logically, uh, use a little bit of common sense, and over time, Improving your guessing odds can help you get a few more right answers on test day, which could be all the difference between you getting the score that you want on the GRE quant section and not. And that could be the difference between getting into the graduate or business school of your choice or not. So hopefully you found this video empowering. Again, push your comments and questions below. And with that, I am Brett Etheridge uh, doing everything I can to empower you to dominate the GRE.